I've had my Cayman 981 for pretty much two years now, a one month away from it being uh, two years. So I just wanted to do a bit of an update and I've also just come back from a 800 mile trip in and around Wales with some friends and learned some things about the car. So I'm going to do a little bit of talking now, cut to walking around the car and then we'll come back here to finish off the video. Um, when I first got the car, um, I did do some preventative maintenance and I've covered this off in one of my very first videos. Um, it's a very known issue that the Porsche um, exhaust bolts are just awful quality and they corrode and people have actually had parts of their exhaust system fall off uh, while driving. So the first thing I did when I got my car was take it to a garage and I had the exhaust bolts all checked. The ones where the exhaust pipe meets cathode converters were absolutely horrendous. I got those replaced. Where it meets the manifold, those bolts were actually quite good, so that was absolutely fine. It's worth doing if you buy one of these cars, go and get that checked. Especially live in a country where there's salt on the roads in the winter to get rid of the ice like the here is in the UK. Um, the only issue I've had with the car is the um, air conditioning radiators, both corroded and leaked. That was about £1,200 to get fixed. I did cover that off in an earlier video. I do have a video about my one year update with the car and my most recent service where I had a problem with the brake caliper bleed nipple. So if you're interested in the costs of those things, please go and look at those videos. I don't intend to cover that again here. Um, but overall, the car's been faultless. Other than that one issue there, and I caught the preventative uh, maintenance in terms of the um, exhaust falling off, the car's been absolutely faultless. Um, I think the reason I probably haven't suffered from the seized um, exhaust valves is because I keep my car in a garage and it goes whenever I clean it I take it out so it gets hot so any opportunity for rust to kind of appear or anything like that or grit or grime to get in there is less so than if the car was stored outside. So what I want to do now is just go and talk around the car um, and then um, give you some more thoughts that I've had on it since owning it a little bit longer and then we'll come back here and finish off. Okay, so one of the things I noticed most about on the road trip, and this isn't talking about storage capacity, you'll be pleased to hear because everyone knows how good they are, were these. These, because they sit where the engine is, and I've never noticed it on other trips before, were just buzzing and vibrating and rattling and making all sorts of horrible noises. So what I've actually done is put some rubber bands in. I've got three black rubber bands in each of them. And now when you put it on, there is no movement at all, no rattling before. You could literally tap it and it would be plastic on plastic. Um, you could silicone, put silicone in there if you wanted, but black rubber bands has absolutely done the trick. But they were driving me nuts, so I actually took them off and had them pinned under that. So that's one thing that really irritated me a lot. But a quick and easy fix. Um, one of the other things that I really did notice is, I've mentioned this before, but you can really just plant your heel there and pivot between the brake and the accelerator, which is absolutely fantastic for when you're driving around uh, B road. You don't have to lift up your foot, which obviously brings up your knee, which can be a problem if you're tall like I am to hit these buttons here or stalks even. You can literally just keep your heel there and just switch between the accelerator um, and the brake, which was such a cool feeling to do as you're just kind of feathering the throttle and just dabbing the brake going into corners around Wales. Um, the other thing I noticed is I do have a rattle coming from there, which I've mentioned before. I don't know what it is. I'm not having a door card pulled apart to look at it. I just can't be bothered. It, it, they, they might even find it. So I'm just living with that and it's not that bad and it's not that often. The biggest takeaway for me is those buttons down there and I've talked about this before but I, I've always driven the car in sport mode um, because sport going on B roads is a nice um, setting to be in um, and I've kind of played between sport normal and sports plus and I just found that sports plus was far too aggressive um, and it keeps the car in the highest revs at uh, all times to give you the most amount of uh, power so torque out of corners or whenever you're driving and it just puts a huge amount of it's not a strain on the engine but it certainly sounds like a strain on the engine um so i would always go into sports mode and leave it in automatic the problem with that is i found when driving in wales um 
I was coming out of corners and I was just in the wrong gear. Um, and I was constantly having to either uh, push the throttle down to the kick down point to get another gear or actually physically use the paddle to get another gear. And you don't want to be doing that when you're coming out of a corner. It's a very smooth shift, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't unsettle the car, but you don't want to be doing that. You're not as smooth and you're not as fast as you could be. Um, so I ended up using Sports Plus with the active suspension um, off, uh, so in a softer setting, uh, and using the paddles, so manual. And it was an absolute revelation. You've got the fastest uh, shift, you've got the best throttle maps, you've got every, all the best stuff from the car, but the softest um, suspension. And it allows you to uh, go around corners and select your gear, and then you've got the absolute best speed to come out of that corner. Um, and it completely transformed not only the enjoyment of the car because you've got more invo involvement because you're going through the paddles as opposed to relying on the car to do it itself. But also because of that, you're always in the right gear. So you're going into the right gear before the corner, cruising around the corner, and then you're pushing the foot down to get out the corner. Um, also with the throttle mapping, it just it's so responsive in Sports Plus. It's unreal. You can literally just kind of feather the throttle and you can feel the car moving backwards and forwards as you're accelerating through the, the corner or out the corner or in the straight line. So that's my recommendation for anyone that's got a PDK um, and Sports Chrono. Put it in Sports Plus, put it in manual, um, turn off the active suspension uh, and crack on with it. You have to forgive me for the state of the car. Like I say, it's just come back from Wales. It's absolutely filthy. Uh, one other thing that is worth doing for people is if you do own one of these, just get underneath now and again. You'll see the exhaust valve there. Just give it a push to make sure it's not seized. Um, that's worth doing from time to time. But yeah, let's go back inside. So yeah, overall you can see it just continues to be a fantastic car. Um, one thing I did forget to mention when I was walking around is that where the seatbelt comes to the top, there is actually um, magnets in there. So you can leave the seatbelt at the top. Previously I've done a video showing that I put single-sided uh, foam down by the um, passenger door um, on the sill to stop the seatbelt smacking against the uh, the actual door frame itself. I still think that's needed because I don't use that side of the car. My daughter tends to use it on my wife and they never put it all the way to the top. So even though you can, and it does actually magnetize itself to the top of the seat holder over here, uh, it's still worth, I think, having that phone down there because no one ever leaves it at the top, which is where it should be. Um, values of the car, looking at Auto Trader today, I reckon I could still get more than I paid for the car two years later. Um, probably about a grand or two more that I would probably think I could sell mine for about 39 um, ish, which is probably 1000 or so more than I paid for it two years ago. Um, spec is everything with these cars and it really does enhance the enjoyment of the car. So please don't kid yourself into or rush into buying a car that doesn't have the spec that you want. Um, even just the active lights that move around the corner with the steering wheel at night time make a big difference. Bose makes a big difference. Don't believe people that say Sports Plus is a gimmick. It is an absolutely, for, for me, it's an absolute must have, not just for launch control, which is a gimmick, but as I was explaining, it puts the car in such an incredibly high strung mode. But when you can control that with the, manually with the gears, it's not as high strung as it is if you leave it in automatic. And the sensitivity of the throttle um, and the way you can just punch out of corners is just phenomenal and when you change up right near the top of the rev range there's like a thump in the back that you get with um, the features of sports plus and it's programmed into the uh, pdk gearbox and it literally feels like it's pushing you along the road and it just adds to the drama of owning the car it stops it from being oh it's just a daily to it's a daily and it's actually a really exciting b road car um I know they're the entry level cars, so spec is often lacking on them. Don't skimp on it. And I would also say don't get one that doesn't have extended leather. The mottled plastic is, it's just not pleasant at all. Things that don't matter, embossed headrests, embossed um, armrests, that doesn't matter. Sports Plus, Bose, extended leather. Um, the extra support on the shoulders for the seats is fantastic. The paddles as opposed to the pushers. Uh, dual zone climate control all that stuff is all really nice to have but please don't listen to people that say um, sports plus is a gimmick it isn't it really transforms the car and makes it an absolute hoot to drive so 
I think I've covered everything I wanted to. It was always going to be quite a short video. If you have any questions, please let me know.